We are talking about the Real Reels 2022 consignment report. Stick around to learn all about it. are the Her Castle Girls. Hello! If you like videos about fashion, modest fashion, fashion news, and lifestyle, you have, you're on the right channel. So just comment, like, and subscribe. Join us here on our channel. We are talking about the real real, and if you don't know who the real real is, we're gonna give you a little spiel on what the real real is. We're a consignment online store and they sell luxury brands. And we're breaking down their list of the top 10 luxury brands that sold so far this year. The Real Real is an online consignment store. They take on items that consumers own, put it on their website and resell it to people that are interested in having doses of luxury. Of course, clothes, accessories, including handbags, Everything that you could think of within the designer space from all the various designers from Cartier all the way to Michael Kors, it's available on the Real Real. When it comes to this sort of data of knowing who is the strongest in the resale industry, Ooh. believe me, it's the Real Real. Ha, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> pun not intended, actually, that was great. <laughs> Don't you already love us? Don't forget right? to subscribe. Um, <laughs> We were really, really interested in this report to see what kind of data has the Real Real collected on these brands, what brands are doing really well in the resale market, even though it's resale. Right. The marketing that brands do, even for their latest products, yes. it still affects how resale products do. I go through this list and let you all know what brands you should be checking out when you go to consignment stores, whether it be a brick and mortar or online, like the Real Real. Number 10. And we're surprised that this thing get like, you know, closer to like the top five. I do have some ideas which I'll go through, but the the number 10 the number 10 yep. brand was Balenciaga. Balenciaga has had quite, I would say, a couple of seasons. <laughs> yeah. They <laughs> have re-released a lot of bags that they originally had released in the early 2000s. Yes. And of course, we all know about the hourglass bag, which it's is basically a big fave here. One of the favorite tiny bags that we can think of, big pay mm -hmm. here. And of course, Balenciaga with their crazy, interesting gimmick schemes, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Balenciaga has had quite a time. Yeah. But because they're having quite a time, that means that the resale market for Balenciaga Ooh. is doing quite well. It and is. to be honest, when you think of luxury handbags specifically, the prices are below $3,000, mm -hmm. which immediately puts it in a bracket for, you know, middle class people saving their money to buy luxury. 22, 18, yeah. they're really grasping onto Balenciaga. Basically, basically whatever Demma puts out, these kids are craving it up fast. Yeah. So, and which is great because uh, listen, at the end of the day, the brand has to make money. So, in the resale market, if you can get an hourglass bag for like under two grand, clearly doing something that's working. Garbage bag for $1,700. Mm -hmm. The stupid, the mesh up shoes. Remember that whole fiasco? In this report, too, they also took into account the ages and generations of people not right. only buying, but actually selling. selling. And a lot of millennials, especially, are reselling as a business, mm. which has led for luxury brands to do a lot of things differently, including yeah. Chanel. But because of that big booming industry of consignment, a lot of millennials are buying things like Balenciaga because Balenciaga is out here. It's a top seller. It's a top seller. We've got Kim Kardashian wearing it. Yeah. We've got all the it people in their 40s wearing it. So millennials are now reselling that yes. as a business. Number nine. We were confused, but, but okay. Here we are. The brand is Burberry. Burberry. As we were trying to figure this out, who is, like, we don't know any die-hard, you know Chanel has the die-hard people right, no matter yeah. what. I can name many people that are all about Chanel. All about Chanel, all about YSL, all, all about, about Louis. Louis. But we don't know anyone that's to say, oh my gosh, yo man, 
Yo, Burberry all day, every day. Somehow they beat Balenciaga. How, Lord? <laughs> and I think I know why. The first clue I had, of course, we looked on the Real Real to see these brands in action, see yeah. it online, see what the price points are. Yeah. And the one thing that I noticed about Burberry is you can literally get a Burberry handbag for mm. under $500. Which, real is, real. which is amazing. Burberry is a traditional, English brand. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Here. They're the ones that made the trench coat a real vibe yes. after I think London Fog. The branding is is oh, solid. Yeah, right? Burberry is known for is mm -hmm. that plaid print. Plaid print. Um, and that plaid print, they put it on everything, which is why I think it does so well Agreed. in resale. Umbrellas, sunglasses, scarves. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And it, yeah. you know, it does as well in men's wear as it does in women's wear. Fast. So I feel that it's the accessories that are pushing this brand it has over to the be. edge. Which is great because, you know, at the end of the day, if brands have to think about accessories, that's where they make their most money. So Burberry is clearly doing something right and people are really exploring Burberry. Number Eight. I was a bit shocked it wasn't higher up, right. but I think that it will get higher up on the list as the times go by Agreed. because they're having a time right now. They are. We're talking about Fendi. Fendi, baby! <laughs> Fendi is doing it. Fendi's having quite the year. The baguette has had a total rebirth. Like, it had its own fashion show. It had its own fashion show. Like, 25 years, whatever they called it. Right. Uh, the baguette. Yes. Rest in peace, Karl Lagerfeld. This bag is so cute. I mean, it love is. it or hate it, you can't stop looking at it. When I first saw it, I'm gonna be real, Carl, I was like, mm, this is mm. But it really grew on me. Yes. Before, it's like, you know, the baguette show that happened over during Fashion Week. It's really grown on me, and the fact that you can, they have so much different, like, there's versions so many of versions. It. You can get it in leather, you can get it in canvas. Yeah, you can it get gets it sparkly. Yeah, sparkly. So and cute. The shape of it makes it translate for the rest of time. Yeah. It's not overtly, overtly weird or gimmicky or too fashion. No. Um, it translates to every age, whether you be Gen Z or in the silent generation of like 70 plus, yeah. the baguette is relevant. Right. That alone is one of the reasons why Fendi's doing well. Another reason, mm -hmm. the new things that Fendi has done, like the Fendi Cafe, the yes. first the the first clutch bag with the F. Right, yeah, that was cute. Yeah, that like, was a hot seller. Fendi is doing they're a doing lot. They're doing a lot. They're doing big things, and it's working. Dang. Saw some of their stuff for spring, summer 2023. Look out, y'all. Number seven. Yes, Hermes. Everyone knows this <laughs> brand. We don't Kelly need to and spend. the Birkin. Yeah, we, we don't need to spend much. This time is the bag that. that's out here selling for fifty thousand dollars resale. Resale, eighty-five thousand dollars. Okay, 000. if you get an Hermes for seventeen thousand dollars, that's a deal. You better crepe it up fast. Okay. Because of the demand, the resale on these bags mm. is doing really well. I believe this is purely based on business. Millennials taking their <laughs> life savings, taking <laughs> their inheritances. Right? and buying two Hermes bags and, and re doubling flipping it. Yes. It's like Nike shoes, right? You just buy the runners to just flip them over. It's flipping houses. We're flipping bags. Flipping so. Hermes. I know a lot of brands, what they do is they like Hermes and now Chanel. Mm -hmm. They have put a limit yeah. on how many bags you can buy. Mm -hmm. Hermes doesn't even put you on a waiting list until you've bought a bunch of sandals and, and scarves, scarves and, and whatnot. And what belts. have you. And, uh, you and told the, me yes. the, wait, the wait time is six years. Yeah, so you gotta wait six years to even look at a bag. That's, that's to even funny. get a SA to hand you a bag, it takes about six years on that wait list. Mm -hmm. It's only giving an mission to the resale market because people that already own like 12 or 50 Hermes right? are like, I don't mind they selling don't mind 10 of them. Departing from a few right, of them? Exactly. Make so some extra cash? If anything, oh it's helping the business of resale of Hermes because people aren't going to wait on the list for six years for no handbag. We're not. Whether <laughs> they can go on the real real it's or to real, any real. consignment exactly. store in New York, Toronto, anywhere in the world where you China, are, and there find is a Hermes. The you Hermes will find handbag. This dig. And you don't need to wait for six years. Six years. Number six. Yes, and number six is a brand that we talk a lot about on here because we love them. Oh my god. We gosh. love Eve. 
Saint Laurent. And all day, every day. All day, every day. We talk about it. We talk about we stare at it. Stare at it. We stare at it. We we go to the store and we stare. We stare, we touch. We, we, we love go. we love YSL. The branding love what it stands for. And yep. we are not shocked at all to see it. Um, on the list. I will say the reason why YSL is on this resale list is because the price point is great. If you perfect. If you have two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, you can buy a YSL. YSL. Yeah. You can not only you don't have to focus on the bigger bags, but you can get the cute small ones. So cute. The style is forever. Yeah. Listen, if you have an envelope bag. You can wear that bag 20 years from now. The envelope bag, the puffer bag, the the, the Lulu. Yes, Listen, the eye these. care bag, which is yes. which did amazing during the first part of the year. And just the whole like essence of YSL. Yes. People just love it because it's that quick like we always say, it's that cool girl. It's the cool girl. It's the, <laughs> it's the cool, cool girl, girl, the cool girl. guy. That's yeah, just... the cool guy. They're getting on the subway, they're getting in their car. Yeah. They walk down the street and, and they, they are just... sure of themselves. Yeah. That's they have that YSL. Like, Young sexy lady. And the price point on the real real for YSL is really good. Yeah. And because YSL's branding is so strong, mm -hmm. people that are reselling as a business are really seeing a huge return. Number Five. The a middle brand, now. Yeah, this is, you know, we're getting to the big leagues. Yeah. On the fashion clothing side, mm. you know, pure, unfortunately, Christian Dior, um, number five, has been getting a lot of controversial comments. Yeah, the, po the poor thing, you know. You geez. know, people aren't loving They're what they're really seeing go down the runway. You know. However, Christian Dior is doing something that Fendi did really well this year. And Balenciaga, which is re-releasing what was good about the brand. And one of the things that Dior has done, which we all know, you know the lady bag. You know that little lady bag, which was, you know, made famous in the late 90s. Um, Worn the by the amazing gorgeous Princess, Princess Di. Diana. And this bag has had a resurgence. Oh yeah, it's killing it. And it's, it's so it. cute for a bag that has the history that it does, it's only, you know, you can get it for 3000 yeah. and, and change. Um, which is pretty good considering the history of Christian Dior being a very old French house and mm -hmm. being able to get a bag that is, you know, an iconic bag mm -hmm. for less than $5,000. They have been doing, but yeah, unfortunately her designs, a lot of people call it the Handmaid's Tale. A lot of people say it's too boho. I will, I will say myself, Car. You know, it's not the greatest. <laughs> no, you know, Mr. Kim Jones doesn't design women's Dior. He designs for women's Fendi. So, you know, I know that the I can never pronounce the woman's name, but anywho, she's a genius when it comes to the re-releases, and as well with the Lady Dior, the saddle bag, it's been it's been a whole oh, resurgence. Oh, yeah, and it's also because kind of having, yep. because of the uh, Y2K movement, everyone's just scraping them up, pulling them up. They're also very affordable because you know it's not huge. Right. It's cute. It's small. It pretty much goes with just about anything. Accessories realm. Dior is cute. Yeah, Dior it. is. And again, doing fabulous. We have the sunglasses, we have the fragrances, we got the have skincare. Skincare, jewelry. Jewelry. Even yeah. the keychain that hangs off the Lady Dior is a, a huge seller. Number, Number four. four. Number four is a brand that is, I call it tried and true. Mm -hmm. I know many women that love this brand. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, they don't do a lot to get attention. They don't. I think and, they need to. And this product. Prada, I believe, is worth, a report said that they're worth like over a billion dollars, which wouldn't shock me. No. Because Prada is like that silent person. Yeah. Almost like YSL. Yeah. Where they don't need to make a lot they of They don't noise. need to do a lot. And because Prada also has Miu Miu. Uh, Prada is out here, first of all, Prada has a very strong showing, not only in handbags. Yes. But also with other accessories like sunglasses and shoes. Yep. Yeah. We saw that, we've talked about the loafer before, we've talked about the chunkiness, the boots from a couple seasons ago. Yeah. Prada has been getting the millennials and now Gen Z to oh, yeah. become followers as well. Okay. How they make handbags, um, they've got the nylon, the canvases. Cute little encrusted 
jewel diamond yeah, jewel ones. ones. So many varieties of how they make their bags. There's a price point for everyone. Oh yes. They're really ending up on all of these strong brands to watch lists. Mm -hmm. So yeah. reselling Prada and buying Prada right now oh, is girl. the right move. We're so Prada of Prada. Get it? We're so proud of Prada. We think Prada Prada. We're so proud of we're so proud Prada Prada. Now I get it, but Number three. Number three recently made a lot of changes and I say that the changes have actually worked in the reseller's favor and this brand like Hermes is Chanel. Oh Chanel. You know, aside from like, you know, over here on this side of the planet, they're saying, you know, only two bags per customer. Right. I heard that in China, which I wouldn't play with China, I leave China alone. The biggest luxury market. They're the, in the reason world. why these luxury brands are still in existence. Thank you, China, for keeping them in business. Yeah, Asia but they, is a huge, huge, huge market. consumer of huge luxury. Market. And let them buy as many bags as they want. But they've also put a limit on some of the provinces in China so they can only buy one bag a year. And it's like, because wow. they were trying, rumor has it, that they're trying to curb the resale. But yeah. it's like, yeah, come on, but that Chanel. Doesn't, that doesn't curb the resale <laughs> curb when anything. most of these people that are in the business of reselling have plenty, have plenty of bags. And it's once it's bought, Chanel shouldn't have any say over what that person wants to do with their purchase. We gave you money, you gave us the bag. Therefore, if we want to sell it the same minute we get it in our hand, people should be allowed to. There's also another belief that Chanel is trying to make themselves more exclusive the, so yeah. they can kind of up their value in the yeah. way that Hermes has. We have seen the prices of Chanel go up to 11000 for, for a the double classic flap, handbag. classic double yeah. flap bag. Yeah. This bag, not even a not good, even good nine months ago, Ooh, was seven. about thousand yeah. dollars because when they first announced their increase like I think it was last year at the time before the increase I think it was like what two to three thousand dollars something you around there but five for it was like five four or five thousand and then it went up to seven like, okay then it went up to nine it's like okay, come on Chanel and now it's at eleven give me a break for Chanel and you go on the real real you see all the versions you can get the version that was made when Carl Longefeld was was around you could the get best. the version that was made you know in 1999 you could get the problem is is that Chanel has been out here and it's been in the resale market for a very long time. Oh, yes. And if you really want Chanel, you can go on a site such as The Real Real and get one within your price range. They oh, yeah. have bags, Chanel handbags that are 4,000, 5,000, even low, even 3,000. Yeah. Depending, depending on, on the size. The size and, and have the, the wear and the tear. Yeah. If you're not picky, to say, oh, it has to be the double flap. If you just want a single flap, girl, you ahead. can find the bag for three thousand dollars. So Absolutely. Why? I, and I and I understand there are people out there that are all about Chanel. Oh, I mean, know they have Chanel's their branding. <laughs> Chanel's branding is top you can't beat it. Notch. Top notch, and it has been that way for like since, since the nineties. Getting up time. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't and know. maybe comment down below. Let us know what you think. Does Chanel warrant a you know a cap on purchasing their handbags? Yeah. Do you guys? Um, especially think when we've been allowed to do as much shopping at Chanel as we've wanted to for all of time. But unless you're Hermes. <laughs> Come on, Chanel. And people claim anyway. that, you know, they don't make it the way they used That's to. That's what I've heard. And, yeah, they're they used you to. You know, so there's a lot of controversy around how Chanel is doing business recently. Because of these rules, I'm telling you, that's why they're number three on this list. Because people will just go to places like The Real Real and Consignment and buy their Chanel, and they yeah. won't care about Chanel's list of two per. Yeah, they won't care about your rules, Chanel. So just lift the ban, <laughs> lift this ridiculous rule, and let people buy like 10 handbags. Mm -hmm. Number two. Ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. I say it's probably one of the favorite brands of it every is. single luxury lover, and it that is. is Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton is. It's perfection though, isn't it? I mean, you can't get over the traditional Speedy 25, 
the moon bag, all of this stuff is just very cute. Even their luggage, remember the trunk yeah, that they had? Yes. That's how they started as a, um, as a luggage company. Yeah. And it's just a, yeah, like you said, it's just a very tried and true brand. They've never changed their style. It's always been, it always is, and it always will be traditional Louis Vuitton. If there's a bag that is loved, they try to keep it within the market. They don't trail away too far from what people love, which is that print. You know, that LV print. And they move along with the time. So they don't have to do a lot. They don't have to gimmick them their That's way into your life. Although there's a lot for say, for resale, a lot of people still keep them just to show the tried and trueness of this bag. Like Angelina Jolie did a right, whole, whole ad campaign. campaign of how she's had her Louis Vuitton like never full bag yeah. for like for 16 gosh, years. Forever by now. <laughs> Still carrying that bag to yeah. this day yeah. it always looks great it's always in and people love the brand and great for resale because some of the pricing is great you can get it for under under two thousand yeah. I mean, dollars who doesn't want I mean, this designer what are you waiting for <laughs> number one now I'm sorry y'all and I'm not like hating on this brand because I do like this brand they've done some stupid things in the past but which brand hasn't done stupid things okay so the number one Brand on the real real consignment list is drum roll Gucci. Gucci has had themselves quite a couple of years with the movie Gucci, the collaborations with uh, Harry Styles, the Ha 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 collection. I don't know why they called it the Ha Ha Ha, but anywho, the Ha 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 collection. Jared Leto, because he was in the film Gucci, they had a lot of stuff going on with him, stuff with Snoop Dogg, stuff with Adidas, stuff with everything under the stuff sun. Stuff with Balenciaga. Yeah, like, they're just out here partnering with, they're gonna partner with us next. Like, they're partnering <laughs> with every, right? But here's the thing with Gucci, and say what you will about Gucci. Yeah. Um, Gucci has been in the headlines for good and bad. We know they had the whole, like, you know, whole racist thing. And yeah, black yeah face the blackface turtleneck. Black turtleneck, if you don't remember. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, that whole, Thing. Come on, scandal. Now, um, and every brand, by the way, every has had has something. Thing. So you know, the video is not about that. No. But um, the thing with Gucci is, is that they've worked really hard at getting into the millennial and into the Gen Z market. Yes. There are some bags. You know that one bag with the GC and yep. the. Yeah. That bag. I'm so. That bag had a. a Good oh couple years. I think every other person had that bag. I think every other person has that bag. When you go into the stores, it is packed. Looking at the clothes, yep. looking at the handbags, yep. looking at the accessories, everything. And people are basically creeping up everything they everything can. Everything they can. Everyone loves Adidas. Everyone loves you know, these um, Nike and Puma. Yeah, more like contemporary lifestyle it. brands. Right. And let's face it, they're the, the you know, those are the brands that people, anyone and everyone can afford. Right. You can get Air Jordans, you can get um, Adidas, you can get Fila. So a lot of these luxury, luxury brands, they want to cater to that market that may yeah. not be able to get the high end. So Gucci's like, okay, people are creeping up Adidas. Let's partner with Adidas. And they're not the only brand that's done this. Right. Um, Louis Vuitton has done it with um, Nike. Rest in peace, Virgil. Yeah. He did a fabulous collection. It's, uh, that's gone. Don't bother looking for it. You won't find it. <laughs> and um, Balmain, a few years ago, they partnered with Puma. Yeah. So they're just doing, I know, what brands are doing now more than ever. Fendi did it, I believe, this with Kim is, Kardashian. This is what's in. Like, this is, yeah, this is what... This is our brand to have to, do to speak to the markets of millennial and yeah. Gen Z, even though it's an older brand. Yeah. And it's definitely, it has its it bags. It yeah. has its it factor. It is not Prada, you know? Yeah. Like, women in their 60s and 70s will easily go into Prada. Oh, absolutely. It's not an issue at all. Mm -mm. Gucci, they had to do a lot of work to find that sort of, okay, where do we fit in this luxury mix? Do we cater to 50 year olds? 
do we cater to the 24 year old that got their first full-time job mm -hmm. at a university like who do we speak to and i think they finally figured out where they where they belong i think so too and now they are uh, everywhere the they're now the resellers top top they're the top of the tier brand and resellers are putting gucci up for yeah. their consignment and, this, and it's, it's being sold people are buying it Bravo, you made it to the top of the list. So who who am I? I don't think Gucci's had a boom like this since like Tom Ford back in the 90s. I, I would agree with that. Good. That's it. If anyone would know this stuff, again, it would be the real real. They are the consignment king. That's That's a good list. I mean, you can't deny facts. And I think that it's very important as people that love luxury fashion, mm -hmm. it's really important to stay on top of what brands are doing and how they perform, even in the resale market. So you're aware of any bags or any sort of items that you own. Hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you feel educated. And again, if you love videos on fashion, fashion trends, modest fashion, fashion news, lifestyle, comment, like, and subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to find us on Instagram under the name Her Castle Girls, and we're also on Tickety Talk. That's right, we're on TikTok. Find us under the same name, Her Castle Girls. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Love you all, and we'll see you in the next video. Mwah! Till next time.